Hello, my name is Ms. Hill. I am the Director of College Placement and Academic Services at Fork Union Military Academy, and this is a special edition of the next stop focusing on the college search process. Our post-secondary options are four-year institutions. This is where you can achieve your bachelor and or graduate degrees, so your colleges, your universities. Then we have our two-year institutions. Uh, many people are looking at two-year institutions now as transfer options. You can also earn an associate's degree and or certification. So that's going to be your junior college, community college, and trade school. Then we also have enlistment where you military jobs and or payment for college, and those are the different branches of the armed services. To focus on what students can do now to prepare for those post-secondary opportunities, GPA courses, extracurriculars, um, making sure taking higher level courses, if you're interested in going into a four-year institution or even a two-year institution, taking those higher level courses, increasing your course rigor, is really beneficial to your transcript, but only do this if you're gonna be successful, meaning that you're only going to earn A's and B's. Taking honors courses can be beneficial to a GPA only if you earn an A or a B because that's what's weighted. Anything below that, it's not going to be beneficial to your GPA. Yes, colleges wanna see honors, AP, dual enrollment. However, if you're not gonna be successful in those classes, then they'd rather see you take an at-level class and earn an A or a B than take an honors class in hopes of boosting your GPA and earning up with a C or a D. The upper level courses, also help the college admission office uh, have an insight as to how successful you may be in the transition to college. If you're really successful in those AP dual enrollment courses, it gives them a more insight that you may have a smoother transition. Make sure to earn strong grades, A's and B's, even if you're not in AP honors, striving for those A's and B's, understand your GPA is an average of all of your high school credit courses and all the grades that you earn. We do not start calculating a GPA until ninth grade. So there are some eighth graders who will have high school course credits on the transcript. Those courses will not factor into the GPA. It will not start until ninth grade. Ninth grade and 10th grade are the most impacting years to the GPA. Participating in extracurricular activities, especially if you're looking to go post-secondary to a four-year institution, especially if it's competitive, having that involvement shows schools that you're involved in the community, making sure that you're getting involved earlier rather than later. Ninth, 10th grade would be great. Um, if you start adding on all these extracurriculars in 11th grade, they are wise to that and know that you're doing it in order to boost your college application. They're really interested in seeing quality over quantity. So if you're involved in a club, being involved in that club, taking leadership roles within that club um, for you know a year, two years, all four years, participating in a club for a semester, then bouncing to another club for another semester and continuing that trend, that does not impress college admission offices. They're interested in quality over quantity. While you are also in school taking those courses, knowing yourself, what courses do you enjoy most? Are you a math science person? Are you an English history person? Are you an English math person? What is it that you enjoy most? And what projects have you done in any of the courses you've been take, that you have taken that you really enjoy? Um, what really made you curious to find out more? What excited you? What extracurriculars, events, volunteering, leadership opportunities have you enjoyed or have you participated in um, and then wanted to keep participating in? What made you curious to find out more, not just with projects, but with those volunteering, those extracurriculars, the leadership? What made you curious to find out more? Do you want to sit in a classroom? Do you want to go to a four-year institution or a two-year institution and sit in a classroom um, kind of like a continuation of high school or do you want to do? And do you need more structure? Do you need someone to hold you accountable? Those are things to think of when you are putting together your um, 
post high school plans. So if you are needing someone to help pay for college, maybe you, and you want to go into the military, you could always talk to a recruiter, get, gather some more information. That would kind of be where someone holds you accountable. You have a little bit more structure. Um, if you want to do looking at trade schools or junior colleges for an associate's degree, um, you know, if you if you know what you want to study and you know that you need to go to a four year institution, what four year institutions are for you? For post secondary reflection, look at you know why do you want to go to college? What is the outcome that you want? And if the outcome is because that's what I'm told to do or that's what I should do, that's not really going to motivate. It's not going to give you a passion or a drive. So why do you want to go? How much do you want to pay? And this is a conversation a family needs to have, sitting down and talking about tuition. It's really important. Where do you want to live? Location. What do you want to study? Again, for the knowing oneself, what were classes that you really liked? In addition, some things to look at when searching for colleges, do they offer you the opportunity for double majoring? Do they offer the major that you want? Do they offer as a minor you want? What academic setting do you want to be in? Do you want to be in a large, a medium, or a small school? And that also depends on the class size. So knowing yourself, if you are at a large school and you go to a lecture hall for your freshman 101 classes and you have a lecture hall of 200 students, your professor might not know that you're there. Are you going to hold yourself accountable to wake up for that 8 a.m. class and report? Even if you're not there, it's still going to be expected that you knew the material that was addressed that day. What extracurriculars are you wanting? Uh, are you playing a sport? Do you want to go into NCAA? Do you want to maybe not be so dedicated, but have fun with this, with whatever you're doing? Are there club sports or clubs, internships? And what type of campus life do you want? When you step on a campus, you'll start understanding the environment and the life that that campus has, you know, academic and personal support the surrounding community, the culture of the school. Those are all things to take into consideration when you're looking at post-secondary options. A really important talk to have and the talk is going to be tuition cost. Uh, for example, going into a mattress store, you tell them what your budget is. The person puts you on this most amazing mattress in the world, uh, completely outside of your budget, way more, almost double what you probably wanted to spend. Now you lay on the other mattresses and nothing compares. Similar concept with colleges, make sure you know what your budget is and what schools you need to be looking at. Um, it, Part of the tuition cost is also going to be location, travel expenses. If you're looking somewhere on the West Coast and you're from the East Coast, what are those travel expenses going to look like? Are you going to be able to come home for weekends? Are you only going to be able to come home for major breaks? Flying to and from? Uh, is family going to be near you to help with transportation and travel costs? Those are really important factors when going into the college search. Cost of application fees, just being aware that there is that cost, there is that fee that you're gonna have to pay. A lot of schools will have fee, fee waiver codes, excuse me, or they might have weeks where it's free application week, but still there could be a fee and just preparing for that. Having a family conversation about the size of the school, the major area of interest, where the focus lies, what the academic structure is. As I said, larger schools, you may have a professor, you may have a teaching assistant, you may have a grad assistant. Do you want professors or, you know, what type of environment do you want? Academic advisors, what's available to the students to help them through their four-ish years. And I say four-ish because some majors might take more than four years. College is the next process towards an end goal of you know, joining the workforce, becoming um, one's own independent person. How is college going to benefit you in that next step? 
and pay attention to the essay and supplemental writings that the colleges ask. So if you're on the Common App, there's going to be one common essay, but each school may or may not have little supplemental writings. Pay attention to the questions that they ask. If it's really easy to answer those questions, your personality may fit that school a little bit better. If you're finding it difficult to answer those questions, then you may end up um, having a difficult time fitting in. Just a thought to consider. Getting the most out of college tours, especially if you're planning for summer college visits. Make an itinerary and map out your visits. Know where you're going, um, trying to make it as cost effective and efficient as possible. Try starting out with a few schools that are closer to home before you plan really significant travel trips. Get your feet wet a little bit so you can help narrow down what you're looking for. If you have schools that are close together, see about getting one trip and two schools get the most bang for your buck, so to say. I wouldn't plan on more than one um, day and two schools. If you plan more than two schools in a day, it's going to be very overwhelming, exhausting, and you're not going to get as, you're not going to reap the benefits of going to visit the school if you do more than two in one day. And I can speak with that from personal experience and taking the cadets to um, the college tours this spring. Sign up early for the tour, go to the school's website, see what dates they have available and what times they have available. They do fill up quickly. So make sure you're scheduling, scheduling excuse me, the tour in advance. Before you schedule hotel arrangements um, or transportation arrangements, make sure you confirm the scheduled tour with the college admission office. Make time to explore not only the campus, but also the surrounding community. Campuses may is going to be the student's home for the next four years. So, you know, it's a student sitting there thinking, you know, I could live here for the next four years. Um, also looking at the surrounding community. Not only are you looking to live on campus, but you're looking to be in part of the overall community. Um, is that somewhere that the student can see themselves? See if the community is a comfortable fit. So even if you've done your college tour, go out and have lunch somewhere or go walk around the community, kind of get an idea, feel for it. Consider what's available. Are there restaurants, shops, transportation? If you're possibly needing a part-time job or internships or hands-on learning, is that something that's offered? And what type of environment? Is it a bustling city or is it a quiet, easygoing town? So if you're looking at VCU, you're looking at, you know, the bustling city of Richmond. If you're looking at Hampton Sydney College, you're looking at probably a quiet, easygoing town of Farmville. Um, both great options, but just depends on your personality and what's going to fit you best. Contact the admission office before you visit just to confirm um, if you are needing any assistance, maybe on tips on hotels or restaurants in the area, they'll be a great resource. And if your family needs special accommodations, talk to the admission office prior to your visit. Let them know what you would need in, so that they can make sure they make provisions to have um, those accommodations for you. And what's really important is take notes as you go, both as a parent and as the student, take notes as you go. A busy college schedule can leave you overwhelmed and the schools will start running together. Like, wait, what day did we visit that school? Wait, which school was that? Write down your thoughts and your feelings. Have a conversation in the car after you complete the tour, um, recapping what did you like? What did you not like? What did you find interesting? Uh, take pictures. Everyone has their cell phones. Take pictures. Visual cue, cues, excuse me, are a great way to remember how a campus um, and a community made you feel. So, but don't be on your phone the entire time. Make sure you're paying attention to your tour, tour guide and also pay attention to the other questions asked by other families. They may be asking questions that are beneficial for you that you might not, might not have thought of. Speaking of questions, some questions to ask, how much does laundry cost? 
How much does it cost to print? So if you're in the library, how much is it to print per page? What are the hours for? If they have a recreational gym open to students, what are those hours available? Uh, if you need to get a workout in, if you are going to the library, what is the library open? You know, especially on the weekends or in the evenings, if you're studying the dining, when is dining serving breakfast? When does it open? When does it close? When do they serve lunch and when do they serve dinner? How many meal swipes? You can ask about the meal plans. A lot of schools will have the swipes for the dining hall and then they'll have specific designated dollars for the campus that can be used outside of the dining hall. Um, ask them how the food is. How does housing work? How do you get paired with your roommate? Do they have singles? Do they have doubles? Do they have triples? Do they have suites? Do they have apartments? Are you required to live on campus all four years? Is it a residential school? Are you required to live on campus as a freshman? More than likely 90% of your schools you're gonna be required to live on campus. So if you're on campus, are you allowed to have cars on campus? Some schools will say yes, some will say no. How accessible are the professors? How's the relationship between the surrounding community and the school? There are numerous questions that you could ask paying attention to what the tour guide is saying when you're going through is also really beneficial um, to help spark any questions. All right, so some resources that you can use. There is a phone app for College Search. It's Lopper. I point students towards bigfuture.org. And the reason for that is because there's college search and scholarship search options. When completing the college search, like if you are to compile a list of six schools in your big um, college board account, that completes a scholarship opportunity where your name is automatically placed every month to either win a few $500 scholarships they give out, or they also give out to $40,000 scholarships. And all you have to do is go in and make a list of, uh, make a list of six schools. And in those six schools, you know, once that task is done, your name's just put into the drawing. So, you know, pretty easy. Another book, Colleges That Change Lives. That's also a website, ctcl.org. The best value colleges, that's by the Princeton Review. So 75 schools that give you the most for your money. Uh, Princeton Review also has the best 387 colleges. There is the Fisk Guide to Colleges. That one comes out yearly. I would note to possibly not look at wanting to apply to schools just because they've been rated one, two, three, or four. Uh, that's not 100% the match that would need to be. So make sure that you're also taking into consideration the other things addressed earlier in the newsletter. Uh, if you're an athlete, a book that you can look at is looking for a full ride and insiders recruiting guide, uh, step by step in order to help you. So if that's um, something that you're looking at, especially if you're wanting to do NCAA, that would be really good. Uh, Please let me know if you guys have any questions. I work with cadets A through K. My email address is hillk at fuma.org. Dr. Benson works with cadets last names L through Z and his email address is bensonj at fuma.org. So if you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out. This can be an overwhelming um, process. So whatever you can do to help guide uh, or provide any insight along the way, we're happy to do so. Thank you so much. Hope you all have a wonderful day.